2012 will be, will be remembered as the year of uh, the uh, revival of the euro, but not so much because of our intervention, but because many other things also happened as well. And the first was the June summit, the, where a new roadmap for the euro was designed and endorsed by the leaders of the Union. And it's the first time, I think, in many years that uh, such a roadmap with the four building blocks, the determination to create a fiscal union, a banking union, an economic union, and a political union was uh, clearly stated and uh, underwritten by all the leaders of the European Union, and especially, of course, by the 17 leaders of the Euro Area member. The other point on which uh, we should focus our attention is that 2012 has been a year of uh, very significant progress by the Euro area governments in uh, progressing with their reforms. On those four pillars, I mean, how complete are they now? Are we five or six out of ten on, uh, on the way there? Well, we saw, we saw progress that should be finalised by the year-end summit on the creation of a single supervisory mechanism, namely one supervisor for the euro area. We saw progress on the fiscal plan, on creating a fiscal union with the fiscal compact, that is to say, stronger rules that would bind together the fiscal policy decisions of the countries that are members of the euro area. We also, we will probably see progress on the economic union front with the approval of uh, contracts for structural reforms. And after the uh, June summit, you made a very important declaration uh, which had a big impact on the markets. You essentially said it is pointless to, back, to bet against the euro. Why did you make such a bold statement? Well, that statement uh, uh, made in such a firm way was addressing one of the major problems we still have in the euro area, namely the fragmentation of financial markets. We need to cope with this problem because it's essential for us to deliver our first and foremost objective, namely price stability. Now we've seen the borrowing costs of the, so the peripheral countries, the stricken countries, uh, fall, but have the speculators merely, uh, have they retreated tail between their legs or, or is this a tactical retreat and the market, negative market reaction could come back? It's hard to say, but very much is in the hands of governments. They will have to act, step in, continue the reform process with the same strength they used in fiscal consolidation now in the, in the structural reforms area. They will have to increase again competitiveness of their structures in other words, they will have to continue with the reform program they have, uh, they have done so far. And the big novelty of the European Central Bank's position was that they promised, you promised, uh, unlimited action but under specific conditions, conditionality, and also saying you were acting within your mandate. Was that essential to win the support of governments, especially Germany? It was essential to design a well-balanced program. As you know, we act independently. It was essential to say that it's unlimited, but it, this doesn't mean uncontrolled, because it can be controlled and monitored by the governing council at each point in time. It doesn't mean unconditional, because there are conditions that will have to be complied with by the governments, and these conditions will be assessed by the Commission, by the EU, and by the IMF. And the European Central Bank itself has tremendous power and authority, can easily be frittered away. But how do, you, how do you maintain that accountability? We are, like any central bank, the ECB is powerful, it's independent and it's unelected. It's not elected. These th three dimensions can be uh, explained only if this independence is being acted within a mandate. That's what the mandate is being given to us by the politically elected governments. But on top of this, and also in view of the fact that the present circumstances are indeed exceptional, we have to work very hard, and we are working very, very hard, to explain, to communicate more, 
especially the current economic situation in many parts of the euro area is very serious. And looking ahead, is the austerity going to be worth it in the end? Our latest forecast uh, last week foresees a beginning of a recovery in the second part of this year. This, uh, the austerity has been painful. We know about its short-term contractionary effects. A lot of progress has been achieved. To give it up now would be tantamount to give up all the sacrifices that millions of people have uh, made so far. Mario Draghi, the Financial Times Person of the Year 2012, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.